I wasn't happy with my last video on Docker privilege escalation. It wasn't my best work, I would admit it. So I decided to recreate it. So to get started, here's a better format. I am a John user and there's a trick like I never met a single person who uses Docker and is not vulnerable to Docker privilege escalation. And the thing is, if you are part of Docker's group, then you can get root privileges without needing anything else. Our assumption here is that you don't know the password of sudo, first of all. Uh, you are a hacker, you don't know the password because if you know the password, you could do, just do sudo bash. You don't even need Docker. You need Docker because you don't know the password of sudo. So let's uh, let's know that what's the trick here. So the trick is uh, you can mount your entire host file system inside Docker container, just like we do in volumes. For instance, I want to access my root directory. Can I? No, I cannot because I'm not root. I'm not allowed to do that. So let's run a command like Docker run tag tag rm so i want to delete my container once i'm done tag it as an interactive mode uh i want to mount my host file system root okay from the host system uh entire root file system from the host inside the docker container under mnt directory then i can specify alpine image and then sh remember i cannot access this directory because i'm not a root user but inside a container, I am a root user. Uh, who am I? I'm a root user and pound sign or hash sign means I'm a root user. So now can I go inside slash MNT? And as you can see, I have entire file system of my whole system inside my Docker container and I can access root directory and I can get the flag. Yep, it's that easy. Anybody who is using Docker container, they are using it this way and uh, now not just that now i can create a new user if i want to because i have access to atchi shadow atchi password atchi shadow i can do that if i want to i don't even need atchi shadow i can just do it with atchi password or i can also escalate my privileges which we will look later why you do need to do that now you may be thinking mm, Abhishek, if that is the problem, the solution is pretty simple. Don't add user to the Docker group. And I would say that is true if you are a single user on your system. And I will explain it. So the problem begins, like if you're not a part of like Docker group, then you have to run like this, Docker, pseudo Docker. And attacker does not know the password of John. If he knew the password, he wouldn't have required Docker. He could have just done bash. So the thing that protecting you from here is the password it's a really good strategy if you are the only person who is using the system but when we talk about organization if you change our wheels or perspective a little bit from the organizational side it's not safe either so let's switch to the devops user now now i'm a devops user here so the scenario is you are an administrator and you hired a devops engineer your devops engineer cannot do sudo bash even okay devops engineer knows his password so he can enter password because he's not part of the sudo group then let's see what uh, devops engineer can run with sudo one two three he can only run docker command with sudo okay fine am i the part of no i am not the part of so i cannot do docker ps i need sudo docker ps now the problem here is Again, your DevOps engineer can get root access if he knows the password. And of course, your DevOps engineer knows the password. So what your DevOps engineer can do is Docker run what we just did, tag tag rm, tag it, and mount the entire host file system inside MNT or any directory of your choice. Specify the Alpine image, um, alpine.sh did i make any mistake probably not and the reason now i can access those uh, root directory is because now i'm root inside docker container who am i i can go inside mnt and root flag yes not just that now now that uh, you have root access uh, your devops engineer has root access on your file system what he will do is he can create a new root account if you want to or he can escalate or um, 
um, increase his privileges by editing sudo's file so sudo edit and we have a file here devops as you can see i'm only allowed to run a docker command i can specify i'm allowed to run all the commands with no passwd means without password i can change that if i want to because i have those permission now so here's the thing if you are part of uh, if you are using docker either way it doesn't really matter you will be affected by um, docker privilege escalation okay the only factor that you are normal user you if you are not part of docker group uh, the reason you are protected because nobody knows your pseudo password but your devops engineer knows your password and your devops engineer uh, should not be uh, working administrator level but he can if he wants to as we just saw it's like an insider's job and insiders are far more dangerous than hackers now the let's switch to john user mm, that's how most people use a docker container now the problem uh, the solution to this thing usually people okay it is very well confused people uh talked about it on the internet a lot there's a solution of it and we call it uh user namespaces or user space remapping and people think uh it's a solution for this problem in reality it is not and the topic is really misunderstood that is why so let's understand it first uh what is uh first of all what is linux namespaces because that's what it is using to protect us from privilege escalation but we will look into that uh docker uh sorry linux namespaces provide isolation for running processes limiting their access to the system resources so namespaces kind of uh, separate processes and restrict access to the whole system now there are different kind of namespaces we can talk about specifically we will talk we will, we will be talking about user namespace here if we go come down here the best way to prevent privilege escalation attack within a container okay uh, note this point within a container and people get confused like best way to prevent privilege escalation is uh using uh, re, um, user name space remapping it's so confusing okay so but it is not it is designed so somebody if some like you are uh, hosting a mysql server inside a docker container if you are running a vulnerable mysql server and you got access to the uh, mysql server and you got command inside docker container from that you won't be able to access anything on the host system from the container that doesn't mean who has access to the docker command cannot get privileged let's understand uh, more the best way to prevent privilege escalation attack from within a container is to configure containers application to run as unprivileged user really good now run a container as unprivileged user as i mentioned here we were uh, root here when i was running docker container i was root so don't use an image uh, that does not run as root and you will only encounter these kind of problem when you are you don't have internet access to pull image like alpine or any image most images uh, run with root privileges but some don't uh, in that case you can self-host your own registry if you are part of network and you can clone it from here there or you can also specify docker min run minus u at runtime at runtime to get uh, a shell if you want to know about this user thing like tag you you should watch the old video that which i just talked about uh, it is off topic that's why that video was very confusing but you should watch it that too for containers whose process running must run as root within docker container you can remap this user to less privileged user on the docker host so, so the definition is saying like you are inside inside your docker container you are a root user but you don't hold any privileges or you are less privileged user on the host system which is running docker containers okay that's that's what we want to achieve how would you do that you do that by running these commands you can read this blog more and uh, first of all we will create a doc uh, a group docker remap we will just enter these commands really quickly then we will create a user with the same name uh, we will add user to the uh, docker remap and we will specify shell as 
false, which means you cannot log in as bash. Then uh, echo and this random integers, let's copy them. Simply, they mean like you are less privileged user. Okay, you can read more about in the documentation. This is a range, by the way, that user will get. Then we will echo this particular string user ns remap as default inside etc docker daemon file. We do that and now let's just restart docker daemon. Okay, now let's try the same command again docker run if I can do docker docker run. Okay, now I'm running the same command that we initially ran. I'm mounting entire host file system inside mnt directory. Now I'm pulling the alpine image again because we changed the namespace. Now I'm not the part of host namespace, which is the default namespace. I changed it. I remapped, I remapped it. That's why it's pulling the image. Now it's pulled. And again, who am I? I'm root. Can I go inside MNT directory? Yes, I can. I have entire file structure. Can I go inside root directory? I cannot. I got permission denied. The reason for it, you are a root user now inside Docker container, but because of remapping, you cannot access the host resources. You are not real. Uh, you are not a root user for the host system. You are only root user for this container for the namespace we just created okay so and if i do ls minus la you can see nobody 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 so you cannot access it okay because you are root you are not nobody or at the same time if you could have accessed them but still you cannot because uh linux kernel is stopping you from doing that because you don't have privileges to access resources from different namespace let's exit all of it so that's how that's a uh, user namespaces uh, is a really good feature and they were introduced for this particular purpose like somebody hacked into your container now he cannot access whatever you mounted inside your resources because he does he is not really a root user he is a root user for your container not for your host resources but the problem is i am running docker container I can't change any user namespace at runtime. So what I will do, I can, okay, let's just put it here. Tag tag user ns host. Yes, I can specify anything at runtime. That is the problem that we didn't get. Now I can go inside and root up and I get, get the flag. So whatever the process that we followed, it didn't really matter because I control the Docker command. I can change user namespaces at runtime. Okay, so yeah, there is no way that you can protect yourself against Docker privilege escalation. At least not by these things that we just discussed. And uh, now to protect yourself against it, we will talk more about these topics later. Uh, it's done by um, by like uh, what should I say? By restricting system calls, a Docker container can make. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, that's that's right. By using uh, utilities or tools like SE Linux, App Armor, or SecComps, we will discuss them later. They just uh, tell uh, Docker container. They just restrict Docker container from making uh, particular system calls. And what these are, we will discuss them those them later. Now. I want to recommend this book. Uh, it's written by Hackersploit. It was written in 2021 with collaboration with Linode. And uh, it's a really good guide. I won't say it covers every single thing, but it's a really good guide. It's available for free. I think you should read it. I learned a lot from it. And it's just like um, best practices you should follow. And like we were talking about limiting system calls with uh, SE uh, Comp or App Armor. So, these are the things that you are required to avoid this privilege escalation vector which we will discuss uh, on different video this series will gonna be in different parts so you should download it it's a really good book i would say and yeah if you are running docker container there is no way you are not vulnerable to privilege escalation most people i'm talking about are not uh, are vulnerable to privilege escalation and i hope that's all i wanted to cover i'm not forgetting hopefully anything yeah yeah that's all uh, thank you. I 
thank you so much i hope it this one is better than this what i explained though i'm not removing this video it covers a uh two or three more tidbits that i skipped in this video that were i felt irrelevant but you should watch it that's all i have i hope that was helpful you learned something bye